Welcome. Welcome to 1025 as we gather together in God's Word this morning. Actually, I'm pretty disappointed today as we're going through this coronavirus situation here because this was supposed to be the Twins opener of Major League Baseball. And I've been a baseball fan my entire life. So now going forward over the next weeks or whatever might follow, uh, to not have baseball is it's going to affect me uh, personally as well. Yeah, but I thought of a story this morning here concerning baseball, and it actually happened some time ago. Many of you have heard the name of Yogi Berra. You know, Yogi's known for all of the times that he misspoke or gave out glib quotes here that he's remembered for. But actually, actually Yogi Berra was a Hall of Fame catcher. He was a, a brilliant ball player for the New York Yankees. So, but what many people don't know about Yogi was that he was also known for being quite a harassing player as he was squatted behind the plate, especially when other batters came to bat. And this came up once in the World Series where the Yankees were playing the Milwaukee Braves. And up to the plate came Hank Aaron, the all-time leading home run hitter in history who took Babe Ruth's record. And Babe Ruth got up to the plate and he was holding the bat getting ready to swing here. And Yogi Berra said to him, Hank, you're holding the bat wrong. You see, back then with the wooden bats here, I'm using one of my grandchildren's bat here for an illustration, but back then the label always indicated the weaker part of the wood on the bat. And so even in Little League, we were told that you turn the bat when you swing it so that the label would be on the back side so that as you were swinging and hitting the ball, you'd hit it on the strongest part of the bat, thus increasing the distance as you hit the ball. Well, Hank Aaron ignored Babe Ruth's comments, and he got up to the plate. And in fact, the very next pitch that came from the Yankee pitcher, he swung and he hit it a long drive that went all the way deep into the left field seats, a home run that gave the Braves that victory over the game. So Aaron is running around the bases, and he's got his head down low, and he comes around third base, and he comes into home. And when he gets close to Yogi Berra, he says to him, I didn't come up here to read, I came here to bat. You know, knowing why you're standing at the plate is key to us succeeding as we go through life. And this has been a problem throughout every generation. In fact, when Jesus was ministering, uh, he encountered a situation where he gives us an example today to keep focused on the most important things in life. Uh, Jesus was at the home of two of his closest friends, two sisters named Mary and Martha here. And the situation was this, they'd invited Jesus to come over for dinner. And let me just read a portion to you from this text from Luke chapter 10. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, they came to the village where a woman Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. So she came to Jesus and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has let me do all the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed and indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better and it will not be taken away from her. Martha was worried about so many things, the cleanliness of her home, the food preparation and whatnot here. I think today Martha would have been quite worried about the COVID virus here. Would it strike her? Would her family get sick? Is her house properly sanitized? <laughs> Probably even, how close should I be sitting to Jesus? But Mary, her sister, sat right at Jesus' feet, and she listened to everything that Jesus said. She absorbed not food, but the teachings from God's holy word. And Jesus said that Mary focused on the one thing that was needed. 
and you are today as well. I thank God that you're listening to this 1025 message. I pray that in this time where we're all absorbing things that are out of the ordinary, these extraordinary times, that we're using more of this time to focus on the one thing that is the best. See, Jesus reminds us that we're not to focus on our jobs. We're not to focus on our kids' sports here. You know, we're not to focus even on the size or the appearance of our home. But during this virus situation, we're given an opportunity to focus more upon our faith, to grow closer to him through his word, to spend more time praying quietly with our Lord, Maybe reading the Bible together with your spouse or your whole family joining together, getting encouragement from God's holy word. Jesus encourages you and me to choose what is better and not to focus on just what is good. Because our focus will become clear if we truly understand why we're standing at the plate. May God grant this for Jesus' sake. Amen.